everyone. Thanks for visiting my channel. If you're new here, welcome. I'm Carol and I'm so glad that you stopped by. I hope you'll consider subscribing, like and share my videos and follow me on social media. I will leave all the links in the description box below. So today, as you can tell from the title, we are going to be making some beef jerky. This is a snack that my husband absolutely loves, as does my the rest of my family. So I've been researching different recipes and different ways to make it, and we've tried some things. So I thought I would share with you our favorite at this point. Uh, last year, I was fortunate enough to get myself an Excalibur dehydrator. So I've been experimenting with some different things, and beef jerky is one of them. And you guys have been asking for some other recipes, some other ways of preserving food. So we're gonna be doing some more dehydrating videos for you. So we're gonna start with beef jerky. It seems to be a popular item and it's really fun to make. And like I said, my husband really enjoys it. So before we get started though, a few things about making beef jerky at home. If you've hung around my channel very much, you know that I'm a safety girl. So I'm going to share with you what the USDA has to say about making beef jerky or any type of jerky safely at home. Of course, they always have rules, right? Okay, so the information I'm going to share with you is was from research done by the University of Wisconsin. That is where a lot of the research is done for home food preserving. Um, and making jerky is no different. If you um, Google USDA guidelines, it's the same that is here and they will reference you to the research that was done at the University of Wisconsin, their extension office. We wanna make sure that we've killed all the pathogens that could make you sick, such as salmonella and E. coli. Um, and there, I'm gonna leave you a link to this article because I'm not gonna read the whole thing. I'm just gonna highlight some things for you. Their research that they did at the University of Wisconsin on making jerky at home be began in 1998 and it continued through 2009. So they have included their findings through 2009 in this article. Well, here we are in 2021. So I think some things have changed a little bit since then and I'm going to share with you what my thoughts are on that but I just want to be clear about safety issues and make sure that I at least speak to that in my video because I think that it's important. Now jerky can be made in your oven or your dehydrator. I'm going to be doing mine in my dehydrator um, but I will talk about making it in the oven as well. So they go on to explain about testing your dehydrator for temperature and they go into detail about how to do that. I'm not gonna talk about that. If you wanna know how to do that, you can go to this link and it will explain in detail how to check the temperature in your dehydrator. Um, they do say to use only dehydrators with a temperature control. Do not use dehydrators with factory preset temperatures that cannot be controlled. Recent research at the University of Wisconsin has shown that dehydrators with factory set temperatures that can't be adjusted do not reliable, reliably produce a safe product and are not recommended. Um, and then they go on to explain safe drying methods. They state two ways that they recommend for making sure that your jerky reaches the appropriate temperature and to ensure that it is safe for consumption. The first method is to dry your meat between 145 and 155 degrees for at least four hours, followed by heating in a preheated 275 degree Fahrenheit oven for 10 minutes after your dehydrating time is over. The other method that they explain is to steam or roast meats in your marinade to an internal temperature of 160 before drying. Poultry has to be heated to 165 internal temperature before drying. The way they recommend doing that is to boil it in the marinade for approximately five minutes before you put it in the dehydrator. I've done that and it's absolutely terrible. <laughs> in my opinion. Um, and oddly enough, when I came across this research at the bottom of their page, they say pretty much the same thing. Using the um, boiling your meat in the marinade for five minutes before drying, unfortunately produces a dried crumbly product that would be judged inferior by Wisconsin standards for chewy, flexible jerky. So they don't even recommend that process. If you look it up on the USDA's website, that is the, the method that they recommend. 
So I've done it. I can say that I did not, we did not like it at all. I felt like in boiling it, even in the marinade, it lost some of its flavor. And as they stated, the texture was terrible. We did not enjoy it at all. So the method that is the best for making sure that you're safe is to dehydrate your meat between 145 and 155 for at least four hours. They recommend six and then proceeding to put it in the oven preheated at 275 degrees for 10 minutes after you're done drying it in your dehydrator. That being said, I have a newer dehydrator and it reaches a temperature of 165 degrees. If you have an older dehydrator that does not reach 165 degrees, I would recommend doing the oven method after you dehydrate your meat, just to be on the safe side. Now, of course, everyone is welcome to do whatever they feel is right in their own kitchen, but that is something that I would recommend. Since I do have an Excalibur, I'm comfortable with just dehydrating my jerky on their highest setting, which is 165, and call it a day. I feel very comfortable with that. I've done it many times that way, and it turns out great. I'm really happy with the results. And when you look in your, if you have an Excalibur um, in their book, they do state under drying raw meats, the USDA recommendation for making jerky safely is to heat the meat to 165 degrees Fahrenheit. It is important that you dry using the highest temperature setting of 165, which is what mine goes up to, because the temperature on the dial is an average temperature. The air temperature will fluctuate above and below that average temperature and will hit an air temp temperature of approximately 165 degrees. So there, um, recipes in their book and on their website don't talk about doing anything other than marinating or curing your meat and then dehydrating it in the dehydrator. If you have an older dehydrator, like I said, it is probably wise to use one of the two methods recommended by the University of Wisconsin or the USDA just to ensure that it is safe. Um, I do also want to mention that in the all new ball book of canning and preserving, if you guys follow me for canning, you know that I really enjoy this book. They do have uh, information about making jerky in there and they give instructions for drying it in your oven. And they also just state that if you're going to use a dehydrator, um, just dehydrate it according to manufacturer's direction. So, I'm gonna follow the instructions for my Excalibur and that's how I'm going to do mine. If you do not have a dehydrator, you can, your instructions are going to be to preheat your oven to the lowest temperature setting, which should be between 165 and 180, and you are gonna dehydrate your jerky from five to seven hours, and I will show you how to test it for doneness. Um, so you can totally do this in the oven. If you are going to do it in the oven, it is recommended that you use a, gr a grid or a, this is a cooling rack. They want you to use a rack. I guess that's the word I'm looking for. You, it's really not a good idea to just put it on a sheet pan. You want it up off of the sheet pan so that it can dehydrate all the way around. So when I used to do mine in the oven, I would use this setup. I used my large sheet pan, put my cooling grid on top, and that's how I would dehydrate my jerky. And it's totally fine to do that. So if you don't have a dehydrator, no worries. You can totally do it that way. Um, the process is still the same. Your temperature will vary depending on your oven, and um, you'll just have to make sure that you're checking for appropriate doneness which we'll be doing also with the, using a dehydrator. So there's that. So with all that being said, you choose what you think is appropriate for you, what your comfort level is with safety. Like I said, I don't feel any need to parboil or to do the oven thing afterward. I'm very comfortable with my Excalibur because it does get up to 165 degrees. So I'm good with that, and that is the process that I'm going to be using. So for today, we are just going to be making just a nicely marinated uh, beef jerky. 
There are a number of recipes for different marinades, different flavored marinades you can find easily available on the internet, on Pinterest, uh, through Facebook, all of those things in canning books have them. Um, lots, so lots of different places to find great recipes to make a delicious jerky. So we're gonna make our marinade and then we're going to, I like to marinate my meat overnight. Uh, as far as your beef is concerned, you can use flank steak, you can use round steak. Um, I like to use round steak. It's inexpensive, easy to find, um, and it makes a really nice beef jerky. As far as slicing it, I always slice mine against the grain. That will give you a more tender jerky. If you slice it with the grain, it will give you a more chewy jerky. So you can play around with that too, decide what texture you like the best. I slice against the grain. Um, so we're going to slice our meat. As far as slicing it, if you wanna make it easier to slice, it is, if you pop it in the freezer 15 to 30 minutes prior to slicing it, it makes it easier to slice um, rather than just cold meat from the refrigerator. It's a lot easier when it's partially frozen or extremely cold. So I always put mine in the freezer for about 15 minutes or so and then slice it. You want to make your slices about a quarter of an inch thick. You can make them thicker, but your drying time obviously is gonna change if you do that. So I try to keep mine about a quarter of an inch thick. I marinate mine in a Ziploc freezer bag um, overnight in the refrigerator. If you want to, you can just use a plastic container. Just make sure it's a non-reactive container. Plastic or glass works really well. Um, I like to marinate mine, like I said, overnight. It's recommended that you marinate for at least a few hours, but I can tell you if you're using round steak, the longer, the better. I wouldn't marinate it for days, but I do try to get in a full 24 hours. So I'm gonna bring you in close and we're gonna get started. Okay, so let's start with our marinade. We are going to need one cup of soy sauce. I like the low sodium. To that, we are going to add a quarter of a cup of Worcestershire. And we are going to add one teaspoon of garlic powder. The seasonings you could adjust to your taste, whatever you like. We're gonna use two teaspoons of onion powder. We're gonna use a quarter of a cup of packed brown sugar. I'm using light brown sugar, but you could use dark if you prefer. And then we're going to add some freshly ground black pepper, a couple of teaspoons. And then we're going to add one teaspoon of liquid smoke. I'm using hickory, but you can use whatever flavoring you like. So we need about a teaspoon. Then we're just gonna give that a little bit of a whisk. And that's good to go. Okay, so now we are going to be cutting our meat. I have three pounds of a top round London broil that I'm gonna be using, and as you can tell, it's pretty thick. I'm gonna cut it in fairly thin slices. Uh, just as an FYI with meat, if it's really cold or partially frozen, it's easier to cut. So it, just cut it to your desired thickness. I don't, we don't like ours really thick or really thin an eighth to a quarter of an inch. Okay, make sure you cut against the grain. I failed to mention that earlier. And some of these longer strips, I'm also going to cut those in half to make them smaller pieces. But if you wanted to leave them larger like that, you could. Okay, so once you get all your meat cut, I like to just use a Ziploc freezer bag and then I can throw it away. If you don't wanna do that, you just wanna use a non-reactive dish such as a glass casserole dish with a lid and, or plastic wrap that you put on top because we're gonna marinate this overnight. Um, 
It's important to marinate it overnight. I know some resources say not to do that, but round steak is pretty tough, and I find that the mar marinating it longer uh, does help to tenderize it and it gives it better flavor. So I'm team overnight. If you don't wanna do it overnight, that's entirely up to you. But then I just go ahead and pour on my marinade. And zip it up. Release as much air as possible. And then just kind of massage it into the meat. And I let it hang out overnight, like I said, um, in the refrigerator, of course. And then I do rotate it um, every few hours or so, rotate it and make sure that the marinade is getting on, getting to all of the meat. Try to separate the slices so that marinade is getting in between as well. So that's it for today. I'll bring you back tomorrow and show you how I dehydrate it. Okay guys, my beef jerky has been marinating in the refrigerator for 24 hours, so we're ready to start the dehydrating process. So what I do is I just take out some of my jerky and I do like to remove some of the excess marinade. So I just kind of um, remove it by putting each piece on a paper towel to get rid of the excess. And then we're just going to line our sheets with our jerky smells amazing. Make sure none of them are overlapping. They can be fairly close together. Welcome to my extended pantry. This is where my dehydrator hangs out. So once you have all of your trays filled with your jerky, then you're going to go ahead and put the lid on whatever that is for you the door, the lid, whatever you want to call it. Put my door on. Uh, just as an FYI, if you have, I have nine room for nine trays. I didn't completely fill up nine trays with jerky. So when I don't have to use all nine trays, I do try to stagger my trays just to allow for more airflow. And then about halfway through my dehydrating time, I do rearrange my trays. Um, just so that they dehydrate more evenly. So anyway, put your door on and then set your timer and your temperature. I'm gonna be dehydrating at 165 on mine for about six hours. And we'll come down and check on it every now and then and I will bring you back. Okay guys, we're back. I've been dehydrating for a, almost four hours. At the three hour mark, I did rotate my trays. Um, I talked about that so that they would dehydrate more evenly. So now I just want to test it for doneness. So um, one of the things that they want you to look for, for for when it's done is it should be pliable, but it should crack, but not break. And they say to test a piece that is cool. So I've set this one aside on a napkin to let it cool. But the other thing, um, we're wanting to reach a temperature of 160 degrees for beef. So I'm going to use, you could use an instant read thermometer. I'm going to use my chef's alarm on one of my thicker pieces just to see what what temperature we're at and i'm just going to take the end of it this piece is a little bit thicker and i'm going to insert it insert it into the middle of it and we'll test it see what the temperature is and it's reading at about 142 degrees we will check this piece that i've allowed to cool it's still pretty pliable and it's cool now and it's still it does not crack yet so we're not there yet I didn't think what that we were but I thought it was worth checking okay guys we are at the six hour mark and we are done I'm gonna turn my dehydrator off um, but I want to show you what to look for your jerky should appear dried looking and it should still be pliable but it should crack when you bend it hopefully you can see that okay it should crack when you bend it but it should not break if it breaks in half you've taken it too far so i think we're really good there i tested some pieces um with my thermometer and we reached 160 degrees so we are good so what i'm going to do now is just let my jerky cool 
to room temperature. And then for storage, um, it's recommended to store them in an air store it in an airtight container. You can use mason jars. You can use storage bags. I like to use the Ziploc freezer bags. I usually store ours in the refrigerator just as an extra precaution, um, but you can store it at room temperature for a week or so. Um, you can store it in the refrigerator for up to a month, and you can store it in the freezer for about six months. Like I said, different sources state different things, so um, use your own discretion, but um, if you want to keep it fresher longer but ready to eat I would just store it in the refrigerator it keeps really well so anyway I hope you guys enjoyed coming along with me today this was fun to do something new um, for you and we'll uh, we'll be doing some more dehydrating I'm really enjoying it I love my Excalibur dehydrator so if you don't have one I encourage you to look at them they're great dehydrators they work really well so anyway thanks for coming along with me please leave me comments in the comment section um, let me know what questions you have don't forget to like subscribe and share and I'll see you next time have a great day